We've got a coach on the hot seat. We've got a quarterback battle potentially. And of course, a lot of attention on USC football coming off of five and seven in 2018. We've got Alicia De Artola from Reign of Troy on the line to talk Trojans. Alicia, how you doing? I'm doing excellent. I'm, uh, I'm glad to be on again. Yeah, absolutely. We appreciate the insight and the information, get a lot of demand for USC talk. And of course, uh, the fan base can't wait to get to 2019 with some cautious optimism that things have to be better than they were in 2018. Uh, we'll start with the quarterback situation, of course. Uh, for most programs, that's the uh, the focus, but in particular here with uh, Jack Sears and with JT Daniels and your thoughts about how they looked uh on this day, but but also throughout the spring. Yeah, the, the offense on, on the spring game was a little bit vanilla uh, compared to what we've seen for the rest of spring camp. So I don't know if any of the quarterbacks really stood out, although Jack Sears threw a pick six, which kind of goes to what he has been the entire spring, which is he's always been this quarterback that you look at and think, man, he, he could really become something, but he's very erratic. Uh, very inconsistent, and I think that came across on the spring game, and it and it's definitely been the storyline for him for most of spring camp. And I, I thought that if he was going to turn this into a quarterback battle between him and JT Daniels, it was going to be because he took a step forward in terms of leveling out his his consistency and really battling JT Daniels. And I don't think that's happened this spring. Um, JT Daniels still is the favorite to win this job. JT hasn't been excellent this spring. In fact, it, it's been a little bit weird for JT because he came in in the fall camp and blew everybody away. Like the hype that that he created in fall camp was real. That's the way that he was performing in, in those practices last August. This spring, he's been a little bit more muted. I, I've looked at him and thought, I know you can perform better than this. And, and you just look a little bit off. And I, it could be he's settling into this new offense. He's, he's uh, learning a new system that, that, uh, it, there's more being asked of him. Uh, Graham Harrell is a huge, huge uh, proponent of, of the importance of footwork with his quarterback. So that's one of the first things he brought up. And I don't know if maybe JT is now thinking about a lot of things too much where last year he wasn't um, in, in, in practice at least, but uh, he has not run away with this job the way that I thought he would. Um, Cause I thought it was, no question, JT is going to win this job. He's going to blow Graham Harrell away. And it hasn't quite been that level. Uh, someone that, that you didn't mention that I am now sort of saying I would like to see him given a chance is, is Matt Fink, the sort of third man in that in that conversation. I like Matt Fink's mentality. I like his leadership. Uh, he's got running ability just as Jack Sears does. He doesn't have Jack Sears' arm, which is why I think he's been on the outskirts of the competition. But you know, it, it, I suppose it could happen. Although I think everyone around USC will tell you it's still JT. Like it would still be a very big surprise if anybody but JT came out of this uh, once once you get into fall and once you get towards the season opener. Now, despite the offensive approach being very vanilla as it typically is for spring games, was there evidence of the air raid and what kind of difference that will look like? Yeah, well, I mean, they they are definitely going out there with the air raid concepts, the sort of spacing concepts. The biggest thing, Clay Helton mentioned this after practice as well, one of the big things that they're going to do in this air raid is check down to the running back more often. Pretty much every play has a running back out in the flat waiting to be a, an outlet if the quarterback doesn't like what he sees. And so vanilla as it was, that's kind of what was going on a lot during the during the spring showcase, as they call it where they were checking the running backs. And those can be really effective plays. It's going to ramp up the number of pass plays that you're throwing out there. Uh, but uh, the, the check downs to the running back are, was, there, was certainly on display. Um, I think working the middle of the field, they didn't throw as many slants as I, as I sort of expected them to because that's been a feature of spring camp practices. But, uh, but they were definitely working, working the flat a little bit more and just sort of the idea of get the ball out as quickly as possible. Talking USC football, we've got uh, Alicia De Artola on the line from Reign of Troy here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, best discussion, debate, and analysis in the game. All right, uh, if you look across the defense, uh, what stood out, both the, the pluses and minuses? Well, the big standout of the day was Drake Jackson. He's an early enrollee, uh, defensive end, sort of outside linebacker, more defensive end than, than outside linebacker, if we're, if we're being honest. 
he posted before spring camp started, he posted a video of him doing a backflip. Uh, and that just sort of goes to show his athleticism. And the spring game is kind of another one of those highlight moments where you just go, whoo, hello, Drake Jackson. He had a one handed pick six. So he was rushing off the edge and he diagnosed that Jack Sears was going to go uh, try to hit one of those outside routes. And he just stuck his palm out, reached straight out and the ball just went straight to his palm and he pulled it back in and, and then pulled off the pick six. It was it was the biggest moment of the day. And it just goes to show the kind of athleticism that Drake Jackson is bringing to that defensive end position. He's had a really strong spring camp. Looks like he's going to be an early contributor. Won't necessarily be a starter to start out with because USC does have Christian Rector to, to deploy there. Uh, but he was a very, very exciting uh, figure to show. And I, I thought the defense rushed the quarterback well. There were quite a few sacks or called sacks in the in the spring showcase. And the pass rush has definitely been an emphasis for the spring camp. Um, and they, they forced another turnover with a strip uh, scoop and score, more or less, from one of the corners. So that was definitely the positive for the defense. The negative for the defense still remains. It's just very, very uh, uh, thin. There's a lot of walk-ons going out there for USC during practice. And that was one of the moments that uh, Marquis Step, one of the running backs, broke off a very long run. Uh, and, and it was a great moment for Marquis Stepp, who also had a very good spring. But when you watch that play, you kind of see, well, OK, here's the deficiency of the defense there. They can get push around and you don't know how much of it is. Uh, is, is this because you're throwing a lot of uh, walk ons out there who aren't necessarily the guys that USC will want to have playing this fall? Or is it that, you know, maybe the run run defense USC still needs to have some work on it, maybe the discipline and gap control and all those things that the defensive coaches are always harping on. Maybe they're not quite there yet. So Alicia, uh, of course there were scholarship reductions years back and um, issues with the NCAA that go back to 2011, 2012 in that range. Uh, why is the roster in the place that it is in 2019? It would, it, it would be, Reason to believe that there's been some mismanagement of the roster if if there's that much uh, reliability or reliance on walk-ons. That is a very good question. I have been asking it myself this entire spring. Part of it is unfortunate uh, situations with injuries. Um, the 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 two starting safeties for the coming year are both coming off a of shoulder surgery, a broken collarbone, and a, a shoulder surgery. So they're just being held out of practice. Um, there's uh, the, the presumably the starting corner, Elijah Griffin, also had shoulder surgery, so he's being held, held out of practice. Um, one of the early enrollee corners that came in is coming off an ACL injury, so he's being held, held out of practice. There's there They are going to get a lot of guys back in the fall, but when you talk about mismanagement, I think that's absolutely correct, and, and there's a lot of different reasons for it. USC has had, at, what, at last count, and I think it's more now, I had I had tracked 25 or or more than that departures in the Clay Helton era from guys getting kicked off the team or guys transferring or medical retirements or just losses of bodies in general. So the offensive line has had the medical retirements. Um, they had you know Jack Jones should be a, a, a key figure for this team, and instead he got kicked off the team last year because he got in trouble with academics and with the law. Um, the safety situation. Baba Bolden was was dealing with some student conduct issues, and he's now gone transferred to Miami. Um, Akili Ross transferred because reasons. Uh, Jay Godfrey transferred because reasons. You know, uh, th those guys in the secondary, they, they've lost a lot of guys. At wide receiver, they had Trayvon Sidney and Josh Matabebe and Randall Grimes. Those are all wide receivers who could have contributed this year who have transferred in the last six months. Um, they lost Joseph Lewis because of legal issues. Like uh, the number of players that USC has lost for one reason or another is just huge. And every time I bring this up, there are people who rightfully say, well, look at every other school out there. Transfers are a problem now. UCLA has had tons, dozens of transfers as well. Part of that is Chip Kelly doing his you know, roster management himself. But USC has just had, it feels like, an extraordinary number of guys who have left all sort of in the same calendar year more or less and they've it, those departures have come at a lot of the same positions and so you're ending up with just a really thin roster they have shored things up with a bunch of new guys coming in as recruits come for the 2019 class but you don't get most of those guys until the fall and that's going to leave you pretty youthful as well so 
there are probably a dozen reasons why the the roster is thin, but you got to look at it and say, was USC developing talent enough? Was USC giving guys enough uh, opportunities? Was there favoritism going on? A lot of different questions around the transfers. Not that you can control the disciplinary things, but add those all up and you end up with 30 guys who have left and you have a thin roster. My response to any coaches that complain about um, the fluidity of the rosters in regards to the transfers, and it, it's it got to be frustrating, I understand that, but the population of college football players within the FBS is staying the same. The, these players aren't, they're, they're going somewhere. So right. programs are gaining and losing players. Now, particular programs have to be gaining more than losing and others losing more than gaining. And obviously there's a distribution of players per position that you need. So you may be losing where you can't afford to lose. And there are those sorts of dynamics as well. So it's not a complete negative because all the coaches that I hear have made a complaint, but somebody's benefiting somewhere from the actual transfer into the program as well. So it works that way too. Yeah, absolutely. And and you could look at USC and say, well, then, okay, you've lost all these guys. Get some transfers in. Find a transfer corner. Try and find a transfer safety. And they they haven't really brought transfers in. There's a couple guys who have been uh, semi-successful transfers. But, you know, uh, part of it also I have to wonder is is roster management in the sense of, like, just to isolate one position group. The wide receivers. They brought in a class of five wide receivers in, in, in 2016, I believe. And half of those guys have now transferred. Well, maybe you didn't recruit the a, a better if you had recruited a better balance of receivers where you didn't have guys who felt like they were being left out while watching their teammates get all the opportunities, they wouldn't have left if if you even things out a little bit and manage your roster that way instead of loading up on five one year and then none the 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 years in between that. I don't know uh, that that it gets again, it gets very, very complicated. But either way, it's left USC with a spring camp that is limited in terms of even the work that they can do, because they uh, Graham Harrell talked uh, the last week about how they're, they're killing their wide receivers because he's used to working with 14 to 18 wide receivers and they have seven healthy right now, six, seven on a day. So and that's including the walk ons like I'm not like those are their walk ons included. So. It has been a problem for USC and one that hopefully will not be as much of an issue when they get to the fall. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking down USC's uh, spring game and the complete uh, USC spring session with Alicia De Artolo from, and you can join her on uh, Reign of Troy. So catch the complete work there on Reign of Troy with Alicia right there. And let's leave it with this, Alicia. Um, I always like to stay ahead of the personnel breakdown and uh, who those players are in the next wave. So aside from the quarterbacks, aside from the known factors, who were some guys that uh, may have been special teams players, may have been freshmen or redshirt freshmen last year, guys that uh, we may know a name or maybe are completely under the radar that you would expect could make an impact or are counted upon to make an impact this fall? On on defense, I think uh, a guy who redshirted last year, in part because of injury, Isaac Taylor Stewart, he was a highly rated recruit uh, in last year's class and didn't get the opportunities that Elijah Griffin did. But he has been, obviously, necessarily, because they don't have very many numbers uh, in the secondary at corner, he's been the main man for USC this spring and has made great strides. He was looked very raw last year, uh, but very talented, very, very fast guy. And he, he looks like he's coming together. He's going up against Michael Pittman every day in practice. So he's getting the benefit of, of going up against a legitimate receiver every day in, in one-on-ones and, and the like. And I think he is going to be a guy that now you can look at and say, well, you might pencil him in as a starter uh, opposite Elijah Griffin, uh, I, I would assume. And he will need to be a reliable player in that secondary because the biggest question for USC on defense is the rebuilt secondary. A lot of new faces in there and both corners are being replaced. Both starting corner positions are being replaced. And he is a guy that I think has had a very strong spring and an encouraging spring as far as his ability to step in, be a, be a first year starter this year and be able to hold his own uh, for USC's defense, which obviously he will need to do uh, on offense. Um, 
I think that I had mentioned earlier, Marquis Step broke off a big, big run in the spring showcase. He's probably been the the star guy of spring camp in terms of uh, somebody who could have a really breakout year. He also redshirted last year, and he's just a big bruising guy who maybe needs to work on the all around game that he brings to the table. That's the the thing we're hearing from Clay Helton. We're hearing from Mike James, the new running backs coach. Marquis Step needs to become a a complete running back. But as far as the running side of it, he is a really stellar guy. I've had people uh, compare him to, to Lendell White. And I, and you could argue he's a slimmer, faster sort of Lendell White. He brings that same mentality to the table where he's just going to try and run over you. And he could become a goal line, uh, if nothing else, because I really like Vivai Malapai. I, I really like Stephen Carr as USC's primary running backs. But I think Marquis Step could easily make a case for himself as USC's primary goal line uh, uh, weapon at running back. And as a result, I think he could take on a pretty big feature for USC's offense uh, this coming season. Check out Reign of Troy and Alicia's work right there. Alicia De Artola joining us to talk USC football as the Trojans wrap up the spring session. Now we head toward August and see what they have for us in uh, finally determining this quarterback battle with JT Daniels clearly in the lead. Alicia, we appreciate you stopping by. Of course. Thank you for having me.